In the midst of the current COVID-19 health crisis that is plaguing the entire world, there is much talk about putting together a one world government, which is now being called the Great Reset. Shalom and greetings from Jerusalem. My name is Joan Lippis, or hashtag Joni in Jerusalem, welcoming you to Lunchtime Prayer for Israel. We're in part two of our series, End Times, and part two is called The Tribulation. And the title of today, which you might have guessed already, is The One World Government, or you can call it The Great Reset. That's the new buzzword today. So let's just jump right in because we're here and it is so important that we understand what is going on. Now in part one of this series, which was called The Preface, we mentioned several events which were considered to take place pre-tribulation, probably before the rapture of the church but as I've said over and over and over again, the caveat is that we don't know the actual timelines. We know as we read the paper and we see what's going on, these prophecies are, are here, there now. So just keep looking up and keep listening for that trumpet call and make sure you're ready. Now, according to the prophets, the Hebrew prophets, there are several other important events that must take place prior to the beginning of the tribulation and probably prior to the rapture. Don't quote me, make up your own mind because no one can make a definitive statement of the timing and the sequence of any of the, these events until we get to the beginning of the tribulation. Now, a one world government is not a new concept. As a matter of fact, Nimrod tried to do it way back when. It's been done several times over the years, hasn't worked at all. It really started in earnest after World War I, when leaders of the nation said, we, we can't have this happen again. So they came together, developed the League of Nations. Didn't work. World War II came along. So they tried again with the United Nations. Well, that's really not working too well, but it's good enough to build on. So now with COVID, the, the virus that has hit the entire world and put the entire world in chaos, much more so than either one of the world wars, now the talk is really coming in earnest and getting much, much louder. The name has changed from a one world government to now it's being called the Great Reset. Now to really understand how the Great Reset fits with these end times, we need to see it as part of the age of the Gentiles. Luke, Luke connected the age of the Gentiles with the tribulation as we look at Luke 21 verses 23 and 24. Let's look at it. Well, we're going to start, actually. Let's start reading in verse 20. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then you know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are in the midst of her depart, and let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Friends, that's God's vengeance on the wicked. Verse 23, But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days, for there will be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people, and they will fall by the edge of the sword and be laid, led away captive into all nations. And here it goes, and Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. 
Friends, that hasn't happened yet. You're not sure about that? Well, go look at the Temple Mount. It is not under Jerusalem control. It is still under the control of Jordan, and they make a lot of noise about it. If you walk up and you try to pray and you're not a Muslim, it's not under Jewish control. It is still being trampled on by the Gentiles. And we're not going to get into the politics of this country because it's not about politics. It's about who wins. And God wins. No question about it. God wins. So when we're looking at the Great Reset, look at it in terms of the age of the Gentiles, which is still in effect and will stay in effect until the second coming of Christ. So don't just look at the Great Reset in terms of our nation and, and our lifestyle. Look at it in terms of Scripture. Always, 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 always do not look at the facts on the ground and use the facts on the ground to understand Scripture. You look at Scripture to understand the facts on the ground. So we want to pray for God to open the eyes of the Jewish people who are so deceived and blind to the danger of the events of this world. They have absolutely no idea what's going on. All they want is peace and security, peace and security, whatever will give us peace and security. Well, you know how dangerous that is. Oh, beloved, if you know Jews, speak to them. Speak to them. I love talking about the fact that we are supposed to be watchmen on the wall and proclaimers from the wall. What good is it to just see and discern the times if you don't speak and you don't warn the people? You know what Ezekiel says, or God says through Ezekiel? If you see danger coming, and you don't warn the people, their blood is on your hands. But if you see danger coming and you do warn them and they don't listen, well, their blood is on their own hands. I don't want any blood on my hands. Thank you very much. You know, COVID tells us, keep washing your hands, keep washing your hands, keep washing your hands. No blood on my hands because I don't stop proclaiming. Amen. And so with that, I thank you for coming. I thank you for praying. I thank you for subscribing. I thank you for contacting us. I thank you for praying for me. And if the Lord leads, please send us some support so we can keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. And with that, I do say Shalom Lehitraot from Jerusalem.